This is episode 72. I am so happy that you're here and thank you for joining my show, your coach, Helen Yuskovic. I am on a worldwide mission to help people get confident in putting themselves first because I used to put myself second my whole life. And because of that, I experienced every unhealthy relationship possible. An unhealthy relationship with myself, my health, my wealth, my intimate relationships, my family, my friends, and my career. I'm now living in an abundance that I used to just dream about. So I want to pave the way for you too. It's time, guys. It's time that you live in the life of your dreams as well. So let's take a step towards that right now. P.S. Subscribe to my podcast on your app now so that you always tune in to my new episodes. Here we are, another episode with one of the smartest humans here in Australia, (laughs) Joachim. He is the author of an amazing book, which I highly recommend called Health at Home. And I brought him on today because of the whole COVID saga that's been going on worldwide. (laughs) And it just doesn't seem to stop. But Joachim has a wealth of knowledge when it comes to all of these sorts of things. And he is an expert in this field of COVID proofing, he calls it. So we're going to break that down today. But before we start that, Joachim, can I just pass you the microphone and can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your history and how did you even get into this field? That's a long story. <laughs> Hi, Helen. <laughs> um, so I was, I grew up in Germany in Hamburg and I went to school, to uni, and at uni I studied biology. But I was also always interested in building. And, you know, back then that was like the 70s, early 80s. It was sustainability. I didn't even know the word back then. It's, it sounds unbelievable, but, you know, as I was thinking about this talk and sustainability didn't exist wow it was called alternative building and i was always into it like mud brick straw bayer you name it different ways of heating and i saw the potential of solar as well and then people build it really sort of like hippie style solar collectors and things and uh, but it wasn't really my path somehow and only when i I lived in New Zealand for a while and came to Australia. And Mm. in Australia, I I ended up teaching. I've been teaching for, I was teaching for many years. What were you um, teaching? Science, biology, you know, following on from uni. And I've I've always been so passionate about biology. Mm. Um, And IT as well, which comes in handy, like the the technological aspect of building biology. And one day I found this, this online course when I worked in a little private school that was always on the edge of going bankrupt. So I need something else. I need something else. I've got a family to look after. And uh, so I found this building biology course and it's, you know, how this one of these moments in life when I go, ah, finally I found it. I had been through all the white pages and yellow pages and tapes in Australia before the internet. That's how long it goes back. Wow. And so, and, and ever since then, I've been learning and how I've observed how, how things are still changing. You know, like we're talking now about a pandemic that would have been, you know, quite unheard of and yeah. un- inconceivable, actually. Yeah, totally. And then what happened? So you came here to Sydney? Yes. And, and th- that's where I started to, to study building biology. And I, I pretty much... Because no one knew what it was. I didn't know anyone else in Australia. And it was like a most exotic thing to think about the health of the indoor environment. And But, you know, I, I did the course and I just got, sort of did it as a hobby business for a long time. I created the first website. And I love uh, that. now it's so, so well known. And, you know, I'm so excited about it after all these years that, you know, eventually the message came through. Unfortunately, the the reason for that is not that people are just interested in building biology but that they're sick mm. and and that we more and more realize how everything is connected and how you know just having healthy food is not enough you also need to exercise you also need to have a healthy indoor environment you, you know 
the psychological, mental environment, all of this is, is, is equally important and you can't take any of them away. Or So the indoor environment that I've specialized in is just one aspect of health. Yes, and he goes deep in this in his book, Health at Home. He's like the expert of making your indoor environment healthy. And I love that you say that because I preach internal health in our physical human and you preach internal health in the home and yes they're both connected as you say Mm. how are you feeling about uh coming out of lockdown so here in sydney we've been given freedom days quite a few different ones but december one we should all be free sort Mm. of some states some states not how are you feeling about this all I have mixed feeling because I'm a bit of an introvert and I quite like the lockdown. <laughs> so, <Me too. laughs> all introverts love the lockdown. Isn't it funny? It's almost hard to admit because everyone seems to suffer the lockdown so much. And I go, oh, well, you know, sometimes I get sick of it because I also like traveling. And so I'm really looking forward. That's what I'm most looking forward to, the traveling, going away a bit further down the coast, up the coast, Mm. out west. I I love that. Yeah, business-wise, of course, I'm really excited that, you know, the phone keeps ringing, the email keeps coming. It's like an avalanche suddenly that hit me. And um, I don't. it's probably similar for you. I hear it from from other business people. It's just like a shock. And we don't know how to cope with it anymore. It's too much. You know, like yes. yesterday I was completely exhausted. I thought it was just a standard day, but I'm not used to it anymore. So yes. generally I'm really, you know, hopeful, optimistic, and maybe like on some level, I hope that we possibly all learned a lesson from this and that we can build bridges. And, you know, there have been some pretty emotional and deep arguments about this whole lockdown thing. Yeah. And, so, you know, I hope it all washes over and we can go back to a better normal than we had before. What's one of the lessons that you wish that people had learned throughout this whole period? Ooh, there comes the teacher in me. Yes. <laughs> Critical thinking, fact checking and actual research. Like, you know, being a science teacher, I've always been for decades i've been trying to teach my students critical thinking and you know rational scientific what is science how how do we find what's true and what's not and why is it true for the moment and maybe not tomorrow and how does research actually work and not just copying things of the internet so there's so much to know about this and i I hope that the population wakes more up to how essential everyone each one of us actually has a responsibility because this this is contagious and yeah. and somehow we all are in this together and the other thing is the, the the disagreements amongst people that reach so deep and you know one truth against the other and that that's really difficult to to bridge mm. but we do have to learn to bridge that definitely I am so proud of my community. I have a couple of private Facebook groups for my business and Mm. it has been such an open-minded, lack of judgment, free for all environment where what you said is really important. Um, Yes. Everybody has to take some sort of responsibility. Mm. And just remember love. Yes. Yeah so easy to forget Um, so I'm glad that you brought that point up which leads me to the next point you recently wrote a blog about COVID proofing (laughs) yes (laughs) I regret the title a little bit (laughs) what is COVID proofing I literally just had a conversation with Mm. a concerned mother sending her child to school Um, and being worried about the COVID virus and Mm. because the children aren't vaccinated and what's going to happen. Can you talk first about what do you mean by COVID proofing? How did this come about? Yes. So it came about, again, it's a long story. It's a short story within a long story. (laughs) The short story is that the local public school, uh, the parent association contacted me 
And they were worried, just like you're saying about the kids going back to school and and what's there to protect them. The, you know, any any of them could have COVID, brings it home. The whole family has it. We'll all be locked down again. Like, like parents think ahead. Like you you can't just leave things to to chance. And the school had no answer to it. But but the school was really cooperative with the parent association. So I had several conversations with them about indoor air quality and had a look at the school and we, we, we during COVID there was one classroom that was, was operational and so we, we did some measurements in there and so I, I, I came up with a proposal for them which they can not completely uh, afford at the moment because mm -hmm. you know all the, the gear that they need and so part of the long story for this is that um, um, I still speak very good German and I read German a lot and in many ways that's really good because they're ahead of us and and one of the things I read was that in Germany every classroom has an air quality monitor, an air filter purifier and they open the windows every 20 minutes to create an airflow and, and when I read that I th it, it shocked me I, I thought oh my god here in Australia we do nothing nothing i haven't even heard of it and and then they contacted me from from katoomba public so i was more than happy to to help them and I, I hope somehow the word spreads that the indoor environment is really important and COVID proofing is misleading because you can't COVID proof mm -hmm. but you can do a lot to to be safe indoors COVID safing we'll call it yes that's so amazing. I am an advocate of constantly opening windows and doors in the home. Yeah. And can you tell me the importance and the listeners of why indoor air quality is important? Because some mm. people just keep everything shut. Why, why should people lift up the windows? Yes. So there, there are three factors. So it's a, in this case, it's about the virus, but it's actually about more. Maybe we come to that later. So there's for to control the virus, you need to know that the virus particles are within little little breath bubbles. Mm -hmm. They float in the air, so that's why it's airborne. The virus itself is dead, but it survives in these little bubbles that we constantly transmit, mm -hmm. and it also binds itself to find dust particles in the air. So that's why a filter is a good idea to, mm -hmm. to have, um, or a HVAC system if you're in an office that also gets filtered, but, but anyway, so, and there are monitoring instruments that tell you, you know, the particle density is going over so many thousand per cubic meter, the humidity is too high. So you, you have to balance the, these factors. Mm -hmm. And another factor is the carbon dioxide, and that's, really central for, for, for controlling the indoor air quality because carbon dioxide is what people breathe out and yes. therefore gives you an indication of, oh, the air is really breathed so many times, it's not good. Open the windows, um, turn the filter up, that kind of thing. And you know, especially in classrooms, I've always been aware that in like you are you know you like you can't exercise in a closed room or you in, in classroom where you have 25 children sitting in a small space breathing you after about 15 minutes i'd say 20 minutes maybe at the most the air becomes outside the carbon dioxide health standard oh, and it, germany it, it, does this process yeah yeah it's not fair. and that's why that's why they figured out 20 minutes that's it of windows in spite of filtering here we need to also just have the airflow and and then keep filtering anyway i feel like after this episode airs your phone's gonna be ringing non-stop from schools well that would be nice <laughs> yo Kim, it's time for your first curveball are you ready to play yes what is something that most people don't know about you personally yeah Mm. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I can tell you one thing. Yes. That I have a motorbike and I love riding it. Have you been mm. riding for a long time? Yeah. All my uh, life, pretty much. Never pictured you as a motorcycle rider. Mm. Wow, that is interesting. <laughs> Thank you. 
I like so traveling if, with it. Do you, because you live out in the mountains, right? Mm. Of course you do. Beautiful greenery space. Um, it would be so nice to ride. Does your wife jump on there with you? She hates it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was asking. <laughs> can you tell me how I can, how can people protect themselves when they go back to work or school? Mm. And what do you suggest that workplaces should do for people? I think, I think actually all workplaces should have indoor air quality monitoring devices installed. So these devices give you, you know, obviously the temperature, the humidity, sometimes the air pressure. It, oh, they also give you nitrous oxides, which are toxic. They give you fine dusts that can be transmitted from photocopiers and, and things or be blown in from outside from diesel. Um, so we talked about carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, all, all these things get really measured on a constant basis in a really affordable way. Mm. And that's what workplaces, it would be really good to have in a workplace. And I, I have clients where workplaces, you know, big office spaces get rented and, and the company itself doesn't have any in, input mm. into what's happening there. So then my client buys an air purifier, puts it in the office and, and improves the, the air that way, you know, rather than wear a mask, you know, you, and you don't have to anymore. So you know, assuming that everyone's vaccinated, of course, if, if, if people are not vaccinated, it's a whole different ballgame. Oh, interesting. Have you come across a client or yourself that has installed air monitoring devices or incorporated this and have noticed a huge difference? And what was the difference that they noticed? I haven't. Because okay. we haven't like, like this COVID virus control thing is 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 very new. I have clients, of course, who, who have air purifiers. Uh, sorry, air um, IQ monitors installed, and they do that just to keep an eye on things. And mm -hmm. because we don't have a double blind, going back to the science thing, we we can't compare it to anything. Mm. They just really like it, and and they get surprises. For example, if you have a gas stove and you turn it on. This this thing goes crazy because the the fumes. If you don't have a strong rain shot, the fumes go into the into the home, and they're all high level fumes. You know? That's so interesting. Mm. Some people have um, still. I heard of a school that still has these um, unflued gas heaters. You know, they, they used to be around a lot. They are absolutely noxious. Like, like, don't ever turn it on. I can only say, don't ever turn it on. Wow. And but, but that's what if I say it to clients, it's one thing. But if the instrument actually shows it and goes all red and crazy, it's another. Yeah. And you have this instrument. Yeah. Yes, I yeah. remember our friend Sam talking about this. Yeah, and yeah. if if anyone is like, there's my website always to to look at. But you can just Google in the air quality monitoring for homes. If if people are listening to this now and they're keen, just don't buy really cheap ones. I, I I tested them. I tried them. I just got one for hundred twenty dollars, thinking, oh, I can't go wrong. I just want to see how what value it is. It isn't. Um, no, it's, it's if you measure these things, you have to be accurate. Otherwise, you act on the wrong information. Mm. I will definitely be putting a link up to all of your goodness in the show notes so that people can connect with you. But it's time for your second curveball. Are you ready to play? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite form of self-care? Meditation and sleep. Aha. Do you meditate <laughs> daily? Yeah. Morning, night or both? Something else you didn't know. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and then in the morning. I'm wearing a meditation shirt. Ah, oh. <laughs> that's so good. And did you say exercise? Sleep. It was sleep. sleep. Exercise. Yeah. Okay. As well. It, it, it all. It all has has its part. But um, so you yeah. take your sleep seriously. Mm. How many hours do you sleep a night? About eight. Good on you. Hmm. I good. think sleep is really important and it's undervalued. It's Oh, well, of course, in building biology, the bedroom is 
the center of our home assessments yeah. because sleep is so important. It's, it's where, even though we are unconscious, and that's the reason why people often think, oh, who cares? You know, I sleep, I no it knocks me out. Um, I'll take a sleeping pill, it knocks me out. It's not the same. Sleep is really, really important. Joachim has so much knowledge, guys. I will have to bring him back for different topics because we can talk about all things 5G, <laughs> Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. Uh, Meditation. Sleep, medita just there's so much goodness in this man's brain. But is there anything that people can be doing at home, Joachim, to COVID proof, as you say? Because a lot of people are scared to leave the home and then come back to the home and maybe bring in some virus. I would say make sure everyone's vaccinated so you can go out safely, eat well, unprocessed food, you know, cook together, have fun together, exercise regularly. And sleep where well, all these things that are just part of, you know, the like the human health package. And in a way, that's one of the benefits of this COVID thing that it has reminded us how important and how like I think maybe it's just me or the people I know, but it's valued more than before when everything was just going, 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 taking for granted. No, and and uh, so all these things are really important as COVID prevention at home, and it's not. The benefit is it's not just about COVID at all. It's about other viruses, other pathogens, other diseases, about feeling depressed, about, you know, it's it's for everyone all the time, generally important, not just for about COVID. Same as the air quality. You know, the, the asthma prevalence in Australia is absolutely horrendous. The, the mold problems in homes mm -hmm. and, and all that is part of COVID prevention because the stronger your immune system is, the more you can you can deal with anything well you know fingers crossed genetics yes. and all that and you said something wonderful all of those things sounded like making sure that you're happy and something that your immune system thrives on i believe is that yeah. you are stress free and happy and yeah. that is one of the best ways to covid proof yourself and what about leaving the home so a few people are too scared to leave the home yeah um do you mean because of covid or because they have been locked yeah, up for so and long because they have you know what it's a bit of both but you mm. know a few people are worried about their elderly parents and if they mm. go out there might be potential that they might you know mm catch something some people are scared to go to the restaurants because some, mm. you know everyone's allowed indoors now and some people mm. are preferring the outdoor picnics <laughs> yeah. which is funny right because mm. before they never used to it's now like mm. swapped yes lots of things have swapped around I, I noticed that too that's really hard because it, it's a mixture of uh, and I, it's it's difficult to give general yeah, advice I... on this because every case is different and every person has different reasons and um i would and also because i live in the mountains if i was living in an apartment in the city i would have been, gone insane by now i can't i don't even know how someone survives under those circumstances and and so if i imagine myself in that kind of situation i would i would go out you know and take smaller steps I put my mask on, walk around the block, mm. um, you know, go to the supermarket at night when I know that barely anyone is there. Take it and, slow. Yeah, and so, sort of build up my confidence again. And, yeah. and also be, what can I say, like gentle and generous with yourself. Don't expect too much. Like I was, I was in a meeting yesterday with, with one of the builders I I, I work with the builder I mostly work with and we've known each other for a long time and but I was exhausted after we had a great time and a great chat but because we are not used to this anymore like it's it's like and there's a quality to meeting a real human being other than zoom but yes. where it's just it's just, I, I, I could never imagine that I would be like that and yeah you know, people coming out of prison what must be like that as well that they're really sort of anxious about meeting other people and how the meeting could go and afterwards they they're exhausted from it and and so i'd say just take it in small steps and take it easy and 
Uh, boundaries is also a very important topic to talk about, but that's yeah. probably another topic. <laughs> I know, right? So it's funny that you mentioned that on the weekend I went out first time ever to mm. Parramatta Park, did a few laps with a friend, and I just started yawning so much. And I was like, I don't think I've had this much fresh air in, <laughs> in a long time. <laughs> feel like tired yeah. and I had such a good sleep that night so those of you listening take it slow it's mm. okay not to want to do everything straight away and it's okay to take your time and like Joachim said build your confidence slowly so thank you there's some really important steps but before we wrap it up when was your last random act of kindness <laughs> well my last one if i think of today of course it has to be today i emailed i emailed a friend in germany who's whose husband just had the fourth stroke so and, and i sent her some it's not looking good so yeah. but you know that was completely at random you suddenly go oh you know you sent wonder. her some love yes that's a beautiful random act of kindness the free ones are the best ones where you send a little bit of love. Mm. I love that. Now, before we go, Joachim, is there anything that you would like to share with the listeners? Fresh air is very good for you. Yes. <laughs> and yeah, well, there's a fear and a knowledge thing here always at play. And, and the parents are worried about their children. That's, that's very important. But don't let the fear run you look for knowledge, look for experts, look for help, you know, raise funds, um, pressure the government, even though that can take forever. Like, like, like you know, those ladies in Katoomba, they're, they're, they're incredible. They're so proactive. They, they say, this is what we need. How can we make it happen? Mm. You know, and, and because you don't want to worry about your kid being at school all day. And, and we also know that you know, COVID is an infection for kids that's rarely ever dangerous. It's like what I've seen is less than the flu probably, but we never yeah. know. We don't know. And because we don't know, we have to be safe. And there's no loss in opening the windows in classrooms. I, I, I said to them, the learning, the focus of the children, the joy of learning, all of this will improve just by you opening the windows, you know. And it's... It's not rocket science. So yeah. thank you for that tip. So those of you listening that have children, tell the teachers to open the windows, please. Every 20 minutes, <laughs> Joachim's orders. And if <laughs> they need proof, get them to call him and he'll educate them. Joachim, thank you so much for your time today. I'm going to have to bring you back because there's so many topics that I'd love to talk to you about. That would be great. <laughs> Thanks for having me today. No problem. We'll talk Bye, soon. Ellen. I hope you enjoyed that episode, guys. I <laughs> I found it fascinating, just his wisdom, you know, and how simple it can be just to help COVID proof by increasing your indoor health. After the show, Joachim he's one of those deep thinkers and so he sent me some information afterwards which I will share with you now and <laughs> classic Joachim he wrote I had lots of afterthoughts of what I should have said and how funny is it how many of you listening when you have a meeting or a presentation or a speaking gig or if you're conversing with someone say afterwards I should have said this, I could have said this. So have a listen to this because it might be important for you. To reduce COVID exposure, the IAQ monitor needs to assess CO2, relative humidity, particles 2.5 as a minimum. Good brands are Yuhu, Kterra, Aware, and that's A-W-A-I-R. Most clients don't like Wi-Fi, so... Make sure the monitor can be cabled into the network or internet router. The Choice magazine tested air purifiers. He highly recommends reading the test before purchasing. There are some dodgy deals out there. Occasionally, Costco has a 
Winix, W-I-N-I-X, on sale for a dream price, he says. Note that the air purifier can be used for bushfire smoke, cooking fumes, allergies, asthma, and it is always good value, he says. The IAQ monitor can also be used to ensure that general air quality is always good to breathe, especially in working environments where creativity and productivity are required. It's also, it also keeps other viruses, bacteria and molds down. He also thought about the fear when having to go out again into a different COVID world. And the best approach is to acknowledge the fear and use it as an alarm system. Fear provides information, but fear is not you. We own it. It does not own us. We can then act, work out a strategy to reality test, move past it, or take it for a walk. (laughs) Oh, and he found another thing that nobody knows about him, and that is that he is doing a Pilates class every Saturday morning. He's loving it and he doesn't really understand why men aren't that into it. So I hope you found that little bit of information useful. Thank you again, Joachim. It's such a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you times infinity for spending time with me. It really means a lot. Putting yourself first will really help escalate your goals, your dreams, and I love being on the journey with you. So make sure you come and tell me on my Instagram at whole health, which is H-O-L underscore health and comment below this podcast photo to share your thoughts on my show today and if you enjoyed it please leave me a five-star review on itunes or spotify so that i can keep bringing amazing value to you i'm sending you truckloads of love power and joy bye for now